Hi, this is Alana. Welcome to the Praying Christian Women podcast. Thanks for joining us today. I am here with Jamie Hampton, and we're going to be talking about spiritual warfare today, and particularly how to know if something is spiritual warfare, because sometimes it isn't as clear as it would be convenient to be. So kind of a heavier subject than other times. So let's go ahead and open up with a word of prayer. God, we just pray that this, um, that this episode and this discussion would be set apart for you, Lord, that you would just be protecting it, um, that this topic of spiritual warfare would just be covered in your spirit and your presence, and that you would guard it, Lord, and that you would allow us to speak truth and wisdom straight from you. And we just um, pray for our listeners that you would open their hearts to what you're saying to them today as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We want to thank, let's see, Cogger08 <laughs> is the screen name at least for this really sweet iTunes review. It says, came across this podcast wanting to find a good morning podcast and this is it. Love the talk on forgiveness. There is such truth. I love the way these ladies speak and bring up stories to tie into the message. So thank you so much for this encouragement. And if you have enjoyed the show and been blessed by it, we would love if you would leave a review on iTunes or Stitcher or wherever it is that you're listening to us that isn't just to give us a pat on the back. It actually can really help other people discover the show as well. So thank you for the reviews, for recommending your show, for recommending this show to your friends and for all the love and support. And our verse of the day today comes from Ephesians six twelve. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So, kind of the quintessential spiritual warfare verse to it enter. Really is. It's like, oh, yeah. I wonder why we picked this one. <laughs> Gee, it's probably been used before in the podcast, but this is very appropriate because there is a battle. There's no question about that. Sometimes we have questions like we're going to address today of whether it's spiritual warfare or whether it's, you know, a hormonal shift and, and feeling bad, you know, but, um, but yeah, we're going to definitely jump right in. Yes, we are. And it's so funny because my boys and I are going through a Marvel marathon and I mean, it's like, it's going on for a couple months now because we're not even doing a movie a week. We'll like watch 20 minutes here, 30 minutes there. But as soon as you were talking about spiritual warfare, like I'm picturing Captain America with his shield and <laughs> I'm sure there's some great biblical analogies to draw from that. I'm just not ready to to point them out. So, <laughs> yeah. although this is totally an aside for you, Jamie, but I have really been wanting to do a show episode about how movies can help your prayer life because there have been a couple movies in particular, like, wow, that, like, this movie has nothing to do with prayer and it's not even a Christian movie, but it's got this amazing message about prayer. So that would be fun one day. Oh, it would. I love that. Just, you know, kind of the, the allegory sort of thing. Yeah. That you can take take stuff out. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll add that to our list. But anyway, on the topic of spiritual warfare, not Captain America, Marvel fighting, when was the time you felt you were treated unfairly? So here in my show notes, I have, I know I'm seeing your show notes. I'm like, Oh, I haven't heard this story. College being kicked out of a bar. (laughs) This was not run through the Praying Christian Women filter. filter. It's not as bad as it sounds. It uh, actually, I was so frustrated because I was. It was my first year of college, and there was a local restaurant slash bar where people would go and hang out, and there was dancing and stuff like that in the evenings. And so I had a couple of friends that wanted to go and asked if I wanted to go too, and. It was, you know, college was still new. I wanted to to see what was out there. So I went there and, you know, you get a stamp if you're underage and a stamp if you're not. And I was underage and we just went in and we were not going to drink or do anything illegal. We were just going to hang out and meet some other people. And, and so we sat down and we're hanging out and having fun. And, um, I forget where I sat down near someone at the same table kind of because it was a big long table and I was sitting there and someone had a beer and was sitting next to me. Mm-hmm. I had water and I very, you know, intentionally had a glass of water and mm-hmm. I was drinking my water and sitting there and I wasn't big into dancing. So I was just kind of hanging out, talking to my friends. And so 
this guy had, uh, so anyway, this, this bouncer comes over to me and said, um, excuse me, ma'am, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. And I was totally floored. And I mean, I was just like, what are you talking about? I don't understand. And he's like, I saw what you were doing. And the guy had left and left his beer sitting next to me, but my water was, and so I said, no, no, this water is mine. And I still remember, like, we actually talked about this before the episode, Alana. I'm not a confrontational person until right, I'm pushed right. to a certain point. And yeah. so this person asked me to leave and I said, but I was drinking water. And I still remember him saying, no, you were drinking that beer. I saw you drink the beer that was sitting next to you. And I was like, smell my breath. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> and I was just, I, but I was, I was baffled. So that was like one of those times where I was very intentionally not breaking the law or doing anything. Right. I was very innocent in that case. Aww. So anyway, yeah, long story for. Uh, did you end up having to leave? Yes, I did. And I felt I was crying. I was so, I felt Aww. so, um, so uh, wronged. It, I could see that, you know, yeah. when he, when someone else is being so much like, I know what you were doing and you know, for sure that you weren't. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, you need to know me, you know, like, yeah. if you knew me, you know, I wouldn't lie to you. <laughs> Oh, anyway, but yeah. well, on behalf of that bouncer, Jamie, I am sorry. Thank you. Someday I'll meet him in heaven and I'm sure we'll be just fine. You'll share a beer. No, I'm joking. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not underage. Yeah. Yes. How about you? Have you ever felt treated unfairly? I feel like, so it is funny because right before we were recording, this ties back into what you were talking about too. Jamie and I were talking about, um, how sometimes it just makes way more sense to get your husband involved <laughs> in something. And I have found that because I feel like I've got a triple whammy because I'm part Asian, which people assume means, you know, like shy, demure, not outgoing, which probably are all words that could describe me. I'm super short and I'm a woman. And so I just, I'm not formidable <laughs> in any way. Yeah. And so it's really hard for me like if I have to get something done on the phone, for example, like even just my voice, people realize, okay, this, this is some little girl who doesn't know what she's talking about. Like, and some of it I'm sure is my own confidence and what I project, you know, but I do have a hard time being taken seriously every once in a while. It's come up in medical settings. Like there was one specialist that we took our son to who we just made it a point. My husband always came to those appointments because that was the only way we would get like straight up answers. Wow. And otherwise he would just very much talk down to me and he wouldn't listen to the things I was saying. It felt like specialists were kind of the worst at that. But yeah, I do, I do feel sometimes like I get frustrated that I'm not taken seriously. But I guess the converse side of that is like, I'm the least suspicious looking person in the world. <laughs> Which, Don't get you know, unfairly accused of things. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, let's just jump in. I, w I think it'd be a good idea to start. Actually, I don't even know. Maybe you were the one. One of us thought it would be a good idea to start and put it in the show notes that we were going to start with some Bible verses about spiritual battles. <laughs> and I don't even remember if that was you or me, but let's I just- I don't either. It's been a while. This, is, yeah. this has been in the works for a while. Right. So how about we can just go through them? So Ephesians 6, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Um, I was thinking just today, like, how would your day-to-day -day life change if every single minute you were aware, like very consciously aware that you had the armor of God on you, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. And this, you know, this whole topic of spiritual warfare, speaking of movies, um, and gleaning truths from movies, the movie series, The Matrix, I don't know mm -hmm. if any of you are familiar with that, but the movie series, The Matrix was very powerful for me because it does depict this world in which people's reality is very different from what they perceive around them. Mm -hmm. And okay. I just feel like they're, you know, they're basically hooked up to computers and they, what they're seeing around them is just an image. Spoiler alert. No, I'm just kidding. Oh no. <laughs> I think it's old enough that it's okay. Probably. But yeah, um, we'll put a disclaimer at the beginning of the episode. <laughs> but yeah, I just feel like that's such a parallel to um, the world we live in and how what we see around us is, it's real and it's a gift from God. And yet 
it's only a partial real, you know, the fullness of realness is whatever the fullness of realness is, is beyond the veil, you know? And so to be aware, I've always wondered what it would be like to have constant spiritual eyes, like in the matrix when, you know, uh, Neo could look at the code and see what it meant, you know, and could actually see the reality behind it anyway. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So we also have 2 Thessalonians 3.3. 3. The Lord is faithful and he will strengthen and protect you from the evil one. And I love that we included this because sometimes people talk about spiritual warfare and I feel like it actually leads to a lot of fear and, you know, maybe even paranoia. And I do feel like we need to be wise, discerning, and cautious. But we also know that God is faithful and he will strengthen and protect us from the evil one. Mm-hmm. And I think that is important because even, you know, going into the topic of spiritual warfare, I get kind of scared sometimes. I get this dark feeling and I think, oh, you know, the devil, demons, it's a scary, you know, and, you know, we do need to have a healthy respect for forces of evil. And yet at the same time, we have no fear because God is the victor. He is the one that will protect us. And he is, yeah. you know, um, my kids were asking me one time, one of my kids was saying, you know, is, is the devil the opposite of God? No, the devil is not the opposite of God. The devil is lower than God. The devil is a fallen right. angel. God created angels. So, mm-hmm. you know, the idea that the devil's not the opposite of God, the devil is subservient to God in, in the ultimate mm-hmm. sense. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. So the song, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. I love that song. Yeah. See, I'm going to state a super unpopular opinion. It kind of bothers me. Oh, yeah. Because it's like three quarters about how strong Satan is. Right. I've often wondered. Yes, because it it kind of almost... Yeah, I can see where that would be. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I know the purpose totally is to show that God is greater. So I'm not about to say that it's, you know, like a wrong song to sing. I just personally don't like singing it. <laughs> no, I can understand that. It, it mm-hmm. It's almost lauding the Prince of Darkness almost Grimm, is. you know? I, I mean, I think that you're right that we do need to treat it with respect. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, not be. We're not frivolous. stronger than Satan. God's stronger than Satan, but we're not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look at the yeah. disciples. I mean, they had some an instance where they didn't have victory. Yeah, over. I was just thinking that where they go in with the name of Paul. Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah. 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 So if you're not familiar with the story, there are these people who know that Paul would drive out demons in the name of Jesus. And so they tried to do it. And they said something like, you know, in the name of the Jesus that Paul preaches, you know, we command you to go out. And the demons, like, what, beat them up and they ran out of the house naked? Is that what happened to them? I don't remember. I just remember there was the one of, like, I think Jesus said, you know, this kind can only come out through prayer Mm -hmm. and fasting. No, this one I'm thinking about is an act where basically the demons are like, okay, we know the name of Jesus. We've heard of this Paul guy, but, like, who in the world are are you? you? Yeah. Yeah. So, no, it really is. It puts it into perspective, Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. balance. And how I think it's Jude where it talks about, you know, even Michael, the archangel, wouldn't um, curse the devil, right? You know, it was kind of the Lord will rebuke you. So, yeah, I I definitely agree that this is a topic to handle with delicacy, balance. We don't want to give in to fear and paranoia but we also don't want to be so flippant. Do you know what I mean? Like every once in a while, there are some funny like memes or t-shirts that are super flippant. And, you know, like I'm the, what is it? I'm the Christian the devil warned you about, or, you know, things like that where I, yeah. I mean, yes, humor is humor, but I think there are cases in the Bible where we're kind of warned against treating these topics too lightly. Right, which takes us, you know, to First Peter five eight and nine. Be alert, oh, nice segue. So mind, yeah, see what I did there. <laughs> Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. But then resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and that one ties in. Oh, go ahead. Message of caution backed up yeah. with a message of hope, and and be alert and, and sober. Mm -hmm. And I like the part about resisting him, you know, which is repeated in James 4, resist the devil and he will flee from you. We do have 
the power. I think, again, we need to recognize, no, we are not stronger than Satan. We're not stronger than demons, but God is, and he who lives in us. What's the verse, um, greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world? Right. And even in James 4, 7, I don't know if I've actually noticed this part before, but, you know, we quote a lot of times, resist the devil and he will flee. But the first part of that verse is submit yourselves then to God. Mm -hmm. Only when we're connected by being in his care or submitted to his authority, are we brought into that place of resisting the devil and he will flee, not because of who we are, but because of who God is. Yeah. So, Mm -hmm. Interesting. So a big question we wanted to cover today is just how do you know if it's spiritual warfare? Because every once in a while, it's probably super clear. But I would say more often than not in my life, there's been this question of, well, is this spiritual warfare? Or, you know, like even you and I, Jamie, have joked about this. Well, either I'm under spiritual attack or I'm having some kind of weird hormone thing, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Often they look pretty much the same, at least at the beginning. Yeah. And, and we kind of joke about that sometimes, but, um, but it can, it can look very much the same. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, where do you, how, how do you know if it's spiritual warfare or not? I think, um, sometimes, well, we have another scripture, I guess I'll read this other scripture that kind of addresses it maybe, um, you know, when tempted, no one should say God is tempting me for God can't be tempted by evil or does he tempt anyone, but each one is tempted by his, when his own evil desires, by his own evil desires, he's lured away and enticed. So there is a time when our own evil desires or our sinful nature can entice us from what we're supposed to be doing. And I think we name that Satan or demonic voice or something like that a lot of times when it it could possibly be our own sinful just nature. Our own flesh, yeah. But what's even the difference? I, I just wonder. I mean, I know that there is a difference in the spiritual world. Like if we had our our spirit world spiritual glasses world on. on, we could <laughs> see. But right. you know, is the battle different? Do we treat it differently? I think when you're talking about temptation, it probably is about the same either way because temptation is temptation. And I feel like whether the temptation comes from, you know, yourself, from the world as in like peer pressure or something, or from the devil, I feel like you fight temptation the same way. So in that sense, I don't think it matters. But I feel like to me, the times where it does feel like it matters are, you know, like, let's just say you're feeling very tired, weary, worn down, and depressed. You're not necessarily tempted to sin, but you just feel so heavy. And in my case, it's either hormones, lack of sleep, lack of vitamins, or spiritual attack. And I feel like each one of those is treated differently. Like if it's lack of sleep, I don't need to pray harder. I need to sleep. Right. You need to sleep. <laughs> if no it's vitamins, is going to relieve yeah. that fatigue. Yeah, I need, you know, to change my diet and or get back on my supplements. If it's spiritual warfare, though, then that is treated differently. So those are the times where I would say, well, I feel like it does matter in those cases. Or if it's mm-hmm. hormones, you just wait it out. And in a few days, you're fine. <laughs> right. Presumably. <laughs> and, you know, for me personally, there have been times when I've just covered all the bases. That's and I know that, that sounds kind of... I don't know, silly, but no, where, I know what you mean. Yeah. You know, where I think it could be hormonal, but I just pray like, God, if this is a spiritual attack, I pray this, this, and this. And um mm-hmm. and and so then claiming scripture and truths, um resisting Satan, you know, like Priscilla Shire in the war room movie, you know, yeah, with her stinky and, shoes. Flee, I'm sick of you. <laughs> Get out of here. You know, you have no control over my family. Uh-huh. Um I've done that before. Um, and, and also taking vitamins and hoping right. that you know, my body will come back I'm into alignment sometime soon. But there have been times where I've been convinced that there was a spiritual attack going yes. on. And I think God gives us sometimes, not always, but I, I do think that there are times when we're like, God, give us discernment, help me know. Um, and I think God does give us discernment sometimes 
and a knowledge that you have to fight this. This is a spiritual battle. Mm -hmm. And that's true. Yeah. Now that's a good point. So maybe step number one is to just pray for a little bit of discernment Mm -hmm. to see where it's coming from. And maybe step number two is try to cover at least some of the bases. (laughs) Right. Yeah. That's actually really, really good and sound advice. Now, what are your thoughts? I know you and I have had a couple quick discussions about this. Um, What are your thoughts about this idea that every so often a demonic influence can attach itself to an object? And if you were to bring that object into your house, then you're kind of opening the doors for oppression. Yeah. And I've, I've wondered about that personally at times Mm -hmm. in my life where that question has come up. Yeah. Um, And I don't know the answer. And so, I mean, I was a mission. I, I, wasn't a missionary. I will not claim that title. I went on a mission trip for a couple of months in um, to Kenya, where I met some people that um, some missionaries, like career missionaries, that mm-hmm. that shared some stories about um, artifacts that they had gotten that they thought yeah. looked cool that they brought in their home, and they noticed some really weird stuff going on afterwards that mm-hmm. just felt dark. Um, they would be convinced that yes, you can bring, you know, if, it, if it's involved in a, a ritual, uh, a demonic ritual or a, mm-hmm. you know, pagan ritual or something like that, that, that there's a possibility of an attachment. Mm-hmm. I, I don't claim to know the answer to that, but personally, um, like you and I have done the like walk through our home and pray over each room. And one of the prayers yeah. when I pray over my home is that nothing dark would be able to come through the threshold of my door, that God's yeah. spirit would be present and that nothing else could, could, could pass through the threshold of, of our door. And um, I have a friend that had just some stuff going on in her home, just, just discord in her family and with her kids and <laughs> asked our prayer group to go and pray through her home and do just that same yeah. thing, pray. So Again, I feel like I don't have the spiritual authority to know, and I haven't personally experienced something overt enough to know if that's right. true. But I do take precautions against it in case it is. How that about makes you? A lot of sense. Yeah. Did I ever tell you my story about the violin bow? Yes. I don't know if you've shared yeah. with our listeners. So, yeah, that so, was very, very interesting. Yeah. This was the closest I've ever come, and it was actually like super severe and scary. So basically my, um, I was a violinist in high school, fairly serious. It was one of the like two or three different career options I was considering pursuing, becoming a music teacher. And my violin bow broke getting rehaired, which like I cried with my baby. Um, Your baby got hurt. (laughs) My baby got hurt. And so my teacher arranged for three different bows to get mailed to my house. And I was going to try all three out, decide which one I wanted and buy that one. And then she would send the other two back. And so I picked up one. I played it for, you know, just half a minute, just see what it felt like. Picked up the next one. I played like two notes. I'm like, oh, no, I don't like this one. And I just put it away. And then, so I was trying to decide between the remaining two. And then my parents were very much like, well, you know, you didn't give that middle one enough of a try. Go ahead and and play that one a little more. I'm like, no, I didn't like that one. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, you know, you didn't play it long enough to be able to determine, you know, this was going to be, you know, a pretty expensive investment. And so it was try them all. (laughs) And so I started to play with it again. And I don't remember the exact like sequence of what happened. I just know that eventually I started crying, like sobbing and telling my parents that this bow like had basically hurt me. Like I felt like I had been assaulted playing this, playing my violin with this bow. Like I felt um, very violated and I was like pretty inconsolable. And thankfully my parents at that point kind of were attuned enough to like, okay, they're you know, I think we all were under the consensus that there was some kind of demonic thing going on with this bow, which who would think, do you know what I mean? Right. But, um, they actually like put it in a box in the garage, <laughs> you know, kind of like both symbolically and physically removed from the home until we could send it back. Mm-hmm. But, um, 
that was by far the most intense. Like I've had for sure spiritual <clears throat> attacks, but this was the um, the only one that I could like so clearly see the connection to an actual object, and it was um, and it was terrible. And I think some of it has to do with like I'm I'm super sensitive to music anyway. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes I can hear a song and kind of be able to um, like maybe like a musical empath, if that's an actual thing. Like sometimes I can be like, wow, I really can tell that I would not like that composer if I met him. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> or, you know, like I, my husband always asks me, cause I, I can't stand Mozart. <laughs> and it's not that I don't like the music. It's like, I don't like his personality. Maybe he was um, just a mean guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so I think some of it maybe has to do with that. Or like, there are a couple songs that like, now that I know the story behind him, they're just way too sad. I'm never going to listen to again and stuff. So like, I know I'm a little oversensitive to maybe not over but hypersensitive to music in the first place mm -hmm. but this was so over the top like it wasn't just yeah this bow felt really weird playing it was like I'm not sure up until that time in my life I had ever cried as hard as I did or had such um really a hysterical reaction to something wow. oh my yeah. goodness yeah weird so um yeah so that is my we, violent story <laughs> well and so how do we handle that if someone is listening right. and they have this object maybe you walk past a room and you get this dark feeling and you just suspect that there's an object there that's carrying some kind of influence or you know whatever what what would you recommend that someone I would do? recommend first of all like remember we have total freedom in Christ I don't feel like we need to be paranoid like there are even I know there was a big debate in the New Testament about food sacrifice to idols. Yeah. But kind of the end word was idols are nothing. And right. food sacrifice to idols is nothing. So I don't, I don't want to get us to the point where we're so fearful of anything. You know what I mean? Because that's just oh, yeah. superstition. Good point. But if you really do sense that there is some kind of darkness, I would definitely just pray, ask for discernment. If you're the kind of person who's like, well, I don't even know if I have discernment, maybe ask someone else to pray with you. Um, and yeah, just be a little bit careful. You know, I, I'm going to sound like a, a bleeding heart right now. Sometimes I feel like we can get worked up about things just because they're not of our own culture. You know what I mean? Right. And, and yeah. that's just kind of xenophobic in my mind. Yeah. But I agree. Yeah, maybe, may, I mean, there obviously in my case, there was something going on there. Like my, my brain didn't just make up a problem with this bow. Yeah. And so I feel like there can be, but not, I, I don't want anyone to get to the point where we're like, I, I had a friend who wouldn't shop at thrift stores for kind of that reason. And I felt like, like I don't know whose home this was in or right. what kind of influences that they have. Right. Now, maybe if God kind of called you to that, or maybe kind of like with me and music, maybe you are a little hypersensitive to things. Maybe that is the best way to go. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I, I just, I feel like some people take spiritual warfare to the point where it kind of becomes paranoia and superstition. Well, and yeah. I would say like, let's just get to being discerning, but also recognizing like the the grace and freedom that we do have in Jesus, you know? Right. And, you know, I, I think one of the reasons that I was excited to do this particular episode is because I do see an imbalance. I see that there are, you know, those on the side of, oh, you know, stop, don't, don't assume it's spiritual and, and just believe everything that we see is all there is. And then there are those that say, okay, every impulse you have is, you know, the demon of gluttony has attached physically, is riding on your back right, right, right. now. And mm -hmm. um, he could jump onto the person standing next to you, like that right. kind of thing, which I don't know if that's how it works. I don't. I, yeah. I can't claim to know, but I feel like there's a danger in um, the way that we perceive, you know, even reading um, like the like like Christian fiction books about demonic right. mm -hmm. things that are, I think, really interesting. C.S. Lewis has some amazing, um, you know, like The Great Divorce and there's several others, um, The Screwtape Letters yeah. that, you know, anthropomorphize demons and the devil. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. think it's very interesting to suspect how it might work. But when you adopt those ideas as like, oh, that's how it works or that's how it looks. Mm -hmm. Or you take people's traditions or um, extra biblical explanations of how 
demonic forces act or how spiritual warfare should be fought, it can be dangerous. So I think one really important thing is to look to the Bible first and be very discerning and not just take someone's word for how to, how to determine things. I don't, yeah. Does that make sense? That makes a ton of sense. And I think Mm -hmm. maybe being careful in our language, you know, like Jamie and I try to be really careful because we totally recognize there are people from a vast array of Christian backgrounds listening to this show. And we do try to be fairly, I guess, like centrist about most things and avoid extremes. But I do feel like sometimes in the language we use, we can go overboard. Like I, yes, there, there maybe is a demon of gluttony, right? Or a spirit of gluttony. But also sometimes we're just tempted to be gluttonous. Like <laughs> I woke up this morning after dreaming that I was eating like all of these, um, like cream filled donuts with caramel icing. I saw that on Facebook this morning and I was like, (laughs) it was so weird and random. And I didn't wake up thinking, wow, the demon of gluttony is trying to, you know, wreck my health. I just woke up and I was like, huh? (laughs) You know, so sometimes like, like the verse, I think it was James, right? Where sometimes we're just tempted because we're tempted, right? Right. We're tempted by by your own evil desires. I think we need to be careful to be too quick to label everything a spirit. And especially when we're talking to others, like I've mm-hmm. heard some people say like, you know, I don't feel like I would ever, it would, it would take a lot of Holy Spirit prompting for me to ever be able to walk up to you and say, Jamie, I really sense that you have the spirit of this. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I might say something like, do you know, Jamie, as I've been praying for you, I've really sensed that God wants me to pray about this area. Like that's probably about as, um, forceful as I get in something like that, because right. it can totally weird you out when someone comes up to you. Like I've had that happen, you know, like Alana, did you know that you have the spirit of this attached to you? I'm like, well, actually, no, I didn't. And <laughs> like, why should How I believe you? Know? Anyway? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and maybe, maybe I do, but I feel like often if you're the kind of person who is discerning and maybe can even discern things about other people, Mm-hmm. I think the default is to assume that God told you that so you can pray for them and not so that you can go and like tell them. <laughs> yeah, right. To use discretion. And, you know, again, Alana and I aren't experts and we would love to have a discussion about this. So if you do have comments or you want to share a story, feel free to email us at connect at prayingchristianwomen.com. Um, and, and if you have more specific topics about spiritual warfare that you'd like to hear us discuss. We would love to hear some of those ideas because this is a really important topic because it is real. And Mm -hmm. whether we know the full picture or not, or whether we will until eternity, it's real. And we have a responsibility to, um, you know, to fight the battle, to be engaged in spiritual warfare. Fight the good fight. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, this has been a super fun topic. I'm sure it's one that we can address some more. I don't even think we made it all the way through our notes for today. We did not. So, yeah. So thank you guys. It's it's fun. Like I, I don't know how to say this without sounding really cheesy, but I just, I appreciate that we can dive into some of these heavier topics with our listeners. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, like we appreciate that about you guys, that you're um, engaged in some of these deeper conversations as opposed to just, you know, let's talk about how good it is to pray. (laughs) You know, I I just really appreciate that we can go into some of these deeper topics with you guys and hope that you got some encouragement, some inspiration. And for those of you who want more resources that Jamie and I have done, we've got tons of extra audio available at our Patreon page. You'll get, um, I don't know the exact number, but like, you know, over 50 extra episodes that we've recorded in the past that are not up in the Praying Christian Women podcast feed. And we'll be adding more resources for our patron supporters as we go. And the great thing is you can select the amount of support you want just based on what you're able and and feel called to do. So you can sign up to support the show at patreon.com slash praying Christian women. And this is really going to help us grow. You know, we still are a fairly new ministry. And so your support just goes such a long way for us. So thank you so much. And we would like to leave you now with our blessing and benediction. 
May God grant us hearts of true humility and repentance that we may grieve over our own sinfulness and stop grieving the Holy Spirit. May he forgive all our selfishness and pride and free us from the sins that hold us in bondage. May our hearts rejoice in the forgiveness he has given and may we be quick to extend that same forgiveness to others. May we walk in humility knowing that our sins have separated us from God, but may we rejoice in the grace he has poured out on us through Jesus Christ our Lord. And our benediction is from 1 Timothy 1.17. To the King of ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen.